We're Littleton, New Hampshire, where in the early 1980s, a community treasure disappeared. You'll meet some folks who decided that what was lost could be found. They got together to reclaim an important part of their town. This ski hill has a long history with the town of Littleton, New Hampshire. As far back as 1939, it was a place where people could go to ski or just get together with their friends. Well, that sort of came to a halt in the early 1980s, and the hill after that was quiet for many years. But luckily, that wasn't the end of the story. It's been revived, and I'm here tonight with the President of the Mount Eustace <laughs> Ski Hill. Yes. Caitlin Krupperman. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> okay. How did you, uh, you missed the meeting, so you got elected president, right? I did. <laughs> but it's, you're doing a good job, eh? Look at the place. Thank you. Yeah, it's amazing to have people out here. It's our first night open with the lights on. Um, ah, and uh, yeah. we're just, there's a lot of people pulling in right now. And yeah, it's a beautiful night to have the community come out and ski. Nice and warm, too. Nice and warm, I know. It it's feels like spring compared to the last couple oh, weeks. Oh, God, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. Now we're going to shoot around here a little bit and take a look. And, sounds good. And I'll talk to you a little bit later indoors, maybe. All right, sounds okay. good. Thank you, Kate. You're welcome. Thank you. Appreciate <laughs> it. It's Wednesday night under the lights. We're on a hill overlooking a town that's settling in after a work day. Just up from the parking lot, volunteers take $5 donations. People are here for an evening of skiing. This is our first time here. The kids are here with the ski club with uh, Bethlehem Rec, and they're looking, they've been dying to get out here, so. Yeah. What does it mean to have it accessible here? For you? Oh, it's awesome. It's such a it's such a great hill. It's in an easy spot, and it's nice to be able to bring the kids out on an old school roto and, and have them go down. Mount Eustace Ski Hill is in Littleton, New Hampshire, a town of about 6,000 people that sits on the northern edge of the White Mountains. Continue along Interstate 93 for several miles more, and you'll be in Vermont. Skiing returns to Littleton. A small group of volunteers made it happen. Is it difficult to keep it going or is it? Uh... Um, it's been challenging, especially when we have winters like this year where we don't have yeah. snow. Um, we do not have snow making here, so we rely just on mother nature. Yeah. Um, so that's been one of our biggest challenges is being able to kind of, you know, look at the forecast and can we open, do we have enough snow, uh, kind of flying by the seat of our pants. Flip through the archives and you'll find pictures like this. Mount Eustace has a long history as a place to gather, ski and get to know neighbors. Now, when you were a little kid, yes. you skied this mountain. We did. Was it like this? Was it open like? It was open like this. Yeah. Everything was that way, though. It, yeah. This is now faced on this side. We yeah. had it all over there. Littleton is Jean McKenna's hometown. She and her husband serve up breakfast at the Coffee Pot Restaurant, as they have every morning for the past 42 years. Long before owning the restaurant, Jean and her eight siblings were regulars on the hill. You've been here a few years. A few years. <laughs> I'm part of Littleton. Is that right? Third, yeah. At least third generation Littleton. At least. Big family. My family was nine children. And they all skied? We all skied, <laughs> and my mother and father. Is that right? Yes. Whoa. And you, you were close enough so you could walk up here. We could walk here. We lived on Grove Street, which yeah. is not even a mile away. Yeah. We'd come up through the backyards, yeah. and we'd 
more often than not wear our skis. Yeah, right. And walk on the snow banks when we could and in the road when we couldn't. <laughs> it had kept us warm. Sure. So when we get here, we'd be ready to go. It was an old farm, you know, and uh, uh, there was a fellow named uh, Lewis was his last name, and he bought it from a farmer. And I'm not sure he bought it as a ski area, but I think he just realized, hey, we could put a rope tow up here, and you know, certainly back in those days, you sort of did anything to get a few dollars in, you know. Gordy Eaton grew up in town. He says the first person who operated the ski hill stuck with it until competition put him out of business. And then it went to somebody by the name of George Pepperell back in like 39 or 40. Uh, and he, he ran at that as a ski area for a while. And then after that, it, the town got involved and realizing it was sort of a, you know, a, a community project. Now, was this a pretty big deal for the whole town, a little Oh, town? yes. Oh, yes. Uh, we had lights, so we did night skiing. We had lessons <laughs> during the week. There were like five or six different teachers with 15 kids each. Well, it was, it was, it was really a going concern there. Uh -huh. it? it was called the Littleton Outing Club. We participated in the Littleton Outing Club um, lessons at night and we had a ball, <laughs> and then we would come and practice the pie shape and then into the slalom yeah. and races. Really? Yep. Wow. It was exciting. We had slalom, we had giant slalom, we had kids everywhere, <laughs> hot chocolate. Racing on a hill this size might not seem like a big deal, but it was. Gordy learned to ski here, rope, toe, and all. He eventually went on to ski for the United States in the 1960 Olympic Games. What he remembers about Mount Eustis doesn't necessarily have to do with his accomplishments. Being outside, outside and just skiing, but the camaraderie we get from, from just, you know, they got little trails up there called the hard scrabble and, you know, that kind of thing where it's, it's uh, uh, egg beaters, I guess they call it, yes, you know, it's really steep and they get mowgly and crazy and so forth. It, but kids at their own level will find their own level, you know what I mean? And, and it's, it's uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of uh, that kind of independence and learn to love it or go play basketball. There's something else you'd like to do, but being outside in winter, to me, is always special. There you go, tighten up your grip, there you go. Back when every weekend every school kid in the in the school was here, you know, this is our social this is our social event. You know, there wasn't any wasn't any internet or any Facebook or anything. So this is where we came and played and hung out. You got it. That's looking good. You're looking good. When did you come here? Oh, uh, let's see. So probably late '60s, early '70s. There you go. Well, it was the only way I was going to ski. I mean, we didn't, we couldn't, we couldn't get to the big mountains. You know, Canna Mountain was in Minnesota were the two that ran. But if we didn't have this here, I probably would have never learned to ski. You know, and, and then, you know, later on, Agassiz and Bethlehem started. So numerous different towns started doing it. So, but really it was... It was really fun. It was really fun. Time changes things. It did at Mount Eustis. People began to travel away from Littleton to larger ski hills where snowmaking provided earlier and longer ski seasons. Some loyalists remained at Mount Eustis, but the hill struggled. And it lasted for a while that way, but then you had a two or three bad snow winters and it's it just didn't make sense economically. The areas were getting bigger, the competition and insurance and all these other issues. And all those small ski areas went away because of the competition. 
we could not, the town, I guess it was in the town's hand, could not get people to come up and run it. That was the end of a long tradition in Littleton. In 1980, skiing ended on Mount Eustis. As far as emotionally being an issue when it closed, it, eh, it was kind of a bummer because it was, it was obvious because no one was using it anymore. You know, it was just, it just became, you know, a non-thing and it just kind of faded away, you know? You know how that goes. But what fades away can reappear. I got involved at Mount Eustis um, on the board back in October of 2021, so recently. Recently, yeah. Yeah, and um, I spent the last 10 years uh, teaching snowboarding on the weekends. I grew up skiing, uh, um, and it was a way to give back to a sport that I love that has affected my life, um, and also give back to the community. John Tully is a board member of the nonprofit that runs the ski hill. It continues what Dave Harkless, a local business owner, began years earlier with other local volunteers. Reopen Mount Eustis and make it work. Dave Harkless from the Littleton Bike Shop decided that this should be an ongoing venture. It's revival around, um, you know, like 2016, 2017. I think the, the sort of the, the base for all of that was accessibility to the sport. <laughs> Ready when you are. <laughs> you know, we're in the heart of the White Mountains, 20 minutes from five different resorts. Um, and it's, but it's expensive, right? So yeah. you don't, you live here, but you might not have access to to what, what is here. I think it was seven, eight years ago when a group of community members here in Littleton decided that they wanted to bring the hill back. Um, so a group of community members came together and formed a board, um, formed a nonprofit, um, got a do a, the rope donated, and um, got Mount Eustis back up and running. The people who keep skiers skiing are volunteers. This is the engine room is in here. This is the upper left. It's the guts of the whole operation in here. There's an old diesel engine, like a 18-wheeler motor in here that powers the pulleys that pulls the ropes. There's a bunch of electrical equipment hooked up to that battery, uh, but it's basically a big motor and a couple big pulleys. Five dollar donations, along with gifts from the community, help keep skiers moving up and down the hill. You may break even. We might, yeah. You know, this opening weekend uh, on Saturday and Sunday, we had a, almost 40 people here. Oh, that's um, great. And it was great to see, you know, one of our biggest thing is accessible to young families. There's yeah. a lot of little kids here. There's a lot of families <laughs> bringing these little ones, learning how to ski. Um, and so that's like one of our biggest things is like, start your kids here. Here you go. Go for it. You know, give them the foundations of skiing and riding, and then, you know, we're surrounded by other bigger resorts, but this is where you, families can start and learn to ski again. Uh, it's a pretty great local resource. Um, you get a lot of, a lot of people out here skiing um, for real cheap. Um, it's a good place to get a bunch of kids out and just have some fun. She's a little small, so I got to kind of carry her between my legs. Um, but my son, 
Um, he holds on as tight as he can, gets as high up the hill as he can, and he has a great time. Um, I'm the rec director here in Bethlehem um, and I started out this program this year for local skiers to um, join the local hill. I've been skiing since I was two. And you guys are with her? <laughs> we are, yes. Our son um, is part of the rec program here. Uh, uh, okay. That's him right there. That, that's him. <laughs> <laughs> for me, I such a skier so like basketball doesn't mean a ton to me but to be able to ski during the week with the kids is great it's great you know especially with our six-year-olds sometimes you don't want to you know spend all day skiing and packing and here we can come and spend an hour you know go up go up the rope to a few times make a few good runs then carry on with your day it's only five minutes away But yeah, it's great that they brought it back for these for the new generation. That takes me back, eh? One thing that grabs my attention is the rope tow. There was a time they were the norm. Now, skiers need an introduction and a quick lesson on how to use them. I grew up in Connecticut. We had a, a small mountain there, but I grew up skiing at Okemo Mountain in southern Vermont. So no, I didn't, I didn't grow up with a rope tow or anything like this. So it's so unique to see these little kids, and our rope tow goes fast. There you go, grab on tight now. <laughs> And to see these little kids just grab on and like hang on for dear life and go up the rope. <laughs> Absolutely fearless. Yeah, and some of the like the adults can't even hang on all the way up to the top, but these little yeah. kids just do lap after lap after lap with this big <laughs> smile on their face and they hang on right until four o'clock. It's amazing to see, I love it. <laughs> It's a lot of our upper body strength. Um, takes a lot of energy out of you. Your arms will definitely be sore the next day after the first time each year. The folks who got the lights back on at Eustis would love it if it returns as a community beacon. They know what it once was, and seemed determined to write a new chapter for Littleton's Ski Hill. And it's right here, and you know, it's great when you can see the lights from driving through on 93, yeah. um, look off to the left and see the hill lit up. Um, mm -hmm. And it's just great, We're we wanted to provide that, that sense of community where families and parents feel comfortable dropping off their kids to come skiing for the night and hang out by the fire and listen to music. And we wanna, we're building, slowly building up to having that community base again. Um, and it's been amazing to see. It's gonna take a lot of planning and a lot of support from our community members, but we think that um, with time, it'll all come together. If Sarah Mogul sounds optimistic, it's her job. She writes grant applications, looks for corporate support, and works to attract enough community partnerships to keep the place running. It's the love of skiing, right? It's the love of kind of the identity of Littleton, and I think that um, the more that we promote this hill and the more that we focus on that identity in Littleton, it could be a really great, um, great thing in addition to the amazing things that are already happening in this town. So it's just a great place to be and hang out and a great group of people. I think one thing that's super important that people don't realize is um, that a personal connection to me is sort of the history of skiing in the area. Right? We have um, the ski museums down the street at the base of Cannon Mountain, um, but 
early on, you know, World War II area of the 10th Mountain Division, and a lot of people that um, went out to Colorado, Camp Hale, um, and joined the, the 10th Mountain Division right. came from this area. And does the town identify at all with the ski area? I mean, do they, they think of it as our ski area or the ski area? Um, it's slowly getting to that point. The community in the past year has um, really stepped up um, to support us. Uh, last winter during the pandemic, we had one of our biggest seasons around. Yeah. Um, we had a lot of skiers here our, on one particular Wednesday night and for closing day, and the community started to pull together for us, and we want to keep that momentum going. Those are old timers. That momentum reignites old memories for Jean. It's been a while since she skied here or anywhere else. Seeing the hill alive again is enough to make her happy. I am happy to see this open again, and I have thought of coming up to ski, but but they haven't done it. You know, <laughs> it's probably time, don't you think? <laughs> I think before my, before I outgrow my boots, <laughs> you know, you, yeah. you know better. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you never outgrow them. So when the thing came back to life, you were here when it came back to life. I was here, but I I came up during the summer and I walked up during the winter, but I didn't come up with skis. Yeah. I just wanted to see what they had done. Yeah. I wanted to see where the rope was. I wanted to see how everything was running. In it. <laughs> and people were skiing. It was exciting to see it. The history of Mount Eustace Ski Hill lives on through stories and old photographs. Its future depends on a strong connection with its community. I remember as a board member the pa a couple years ago, um, we would struggle to get people to come here. Uh, you know, there was one night that we were like, well, should we even open on a Friday if we only had one or two skiers here? And it was hard because like our our board is volunteer run. And so, you know, if no one comes, it was kind of like, all right, well, should we even open? Um, sometimes we would be open on a Saturday or Sunday and have two, two to five skiers here. Um, and that was really hard. It was like, how do we gain the momentum? Like, you know, like, what do we do? So we, we started doing some more marketing. We started doing some more fundraising. Um, and honestly, I think it took a, a fresh group of people that were a little bit younger to come in and kind of look at the hill differently. Um, and as I was talking about before with the pandemic, last winter, it was February vacation. I'll never forget it. It was a night like tonight, 40 degrees. It was a uh, February vacation. So there was a lot of people off. We had, we were open for night skiing and we had, I believe over 120 people here. No, it was not the like. Yeah, yeah, and we're we're really excited about this year and, and going forward and seeing what we can do right now. You know, it's important to just get get the hill open and running and yeah. and get back out there. I think we're finally gaining the momentum that we need, and we're still constantly um, striving to have that community feel. And it's really nice to see the impact that social media has and just having a simple website out there and then word of mouth. Because look at these kids, man. It's just, you know, what would they be doing tonight if they weren't out here? They getting fresh air, having fun, skiing, snowboarding. It's, it's a great alternative for, there's not, there's not a great deal of other activities to do at night around here for kids. Oh, you haven't done it before? Okay, so I'm gonna hold it up for you. So you just put it straight. And just grab easy, grab easy, there you go. <laughs> Four out of a lot of jackets and gloves here.
Well, we've had a beautiful evening here at Mount Eustace, but unfortunately it's drawing to a close for me. So I've come to that part of the program I like least time to say goodbye, and so I shall. Uh, I hope to see you again on Windows to the Wild. And thank you for a lovely evening. Thank you, and in the meantime, come out and ski. You talking to me, pal? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I may not, but everybody else, come out to ski. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't gonna get any better than that. <laughs> Support for the production of Windows to the Wild is provided by the Alice J. Rain Charitable Trust, the Fuller Foundation, the Gilbert Verney Foundation, Bailey Charitable Foundation, the McIninch Foundation, and viewers like you. Thank you.